video, I'm walking you through a beginner conga lesson by going over the parts of the drum, conga sounds, in a basic pattern. This is an instrument that is very rewarding to play, especially with the right fundamentals. I'm Kevin Zahner, and welcome to Rhythm Notes. I feel like I had a first lesson every time I started working with a new teacher, not because they all approached the instrument differently, but because with each first lesson with a new teacher, I learned something that I still use every time I play today. And so in this lesson, I hope you take away something the same. Congas, or tumbadoras, come from developments on drums from West African traditions practiced in many parts of Cuba. They became the central drums in the Cuban sewn groups of the 1940s, like Arsenio Rodriguez's band, laying the foundation for modern genres like salsa and Afro-Cuban Latin jazz. The drum head can be real high, like from a steer, or it can be synthetic. The real heads tend to sound better on most drums, but can be difficult to maintain and tune in environments that change the tuning of the drum. The synthetic heads are not as easily affected by changes in moisture or temperature that can occur when you move the drums from one place to another, which is why uh, a lot of conga drummers who play live gigs use synthetic heads. Conga drums have tension rods that pull the head down over the end of the drum shell. You should tighten each nut on the rods gradually and evenly to maintain a good tuning. But what's more important than worrying too much about the drum heads and tuning is how you are playing the drum. This starts with your playing position, and this is all about the relationship between the drum height and how high or low you're sitting. The key is to place your palm on the drum and try to adjust your seat height so your elbow is a little lower than your wrist. This playing position will allow you to have more power and efficiency when you're playing the drum. Also, make sure you're sitting with good posture and are as, as relaxed as possible in your shoulders, your arms, and hands. This instrument is very demanding physically, so it's important to get set up right before playing. We can play a variety of different sounds on conga drums each of which is either a strong sound like an open tone or a slap, or it's more subtle like the heel and toe strokes. For your first lesson, we're gonna focus on the heel, toe, open tone, and closed slap sounds. The first sound is the heel, and it's produced with a drop stroke, not a push. It's a drop. Raise your hand off the drum and drop it making contact with your hand like you dropped a steak on the butcher block. Uh, the secret for this stroke is to relax. In the prep stroke, let your elbow bend a bit while keeping your hand parallel to the drum head. But don't get too caught up in some of these mechanics. Focus on dropping your hand on the drum head. Practice alternating hands slowly like this. If you want free lesson PDFs, subscribe to my newsletter, Rhythm Insider, at rhythminsider.com. You'll get a free gift when you confirm your subscription. The next sound is produced by the toe stroke. 
Unlike the heel stroke, the toe is an acceleration. After you drop your hand on the drum for a heel stroke, raise your fingers from the drum by letting your wrist act as a hinge. Then accelerate your hand as much as possible without tensing up all the way to the drum. Since there's an acceleration with the hand, this time your fingers are gonna make most of the sound. So go easy on yourself at first. Practice the following heel and toe stroke exercise slowly. The heel toe stroke exercise is probably the most important fundamental conga drumming technique that will separate the stronger players from the rest. It may seem boring, but I assure you that it makes all the difference and anyone can do it who wants to put in the time and effort. The other two sounds are the tone and slap, and these sounds are mostly the same stroke with one difference. The stroke motion is like a toe stroke but this time the middle of your palm is gonna be on the edge of the drum. The difference between a tone and a slap is whether or not your fingers are kept straight or relaxed. For a tone, keep your fingers straight when you make contact with the drum, then relax your fingers. For a slap, play the stroke with your fingers relaxed. When your palm side of your knuckles contacts the drum head, your fingers in a relaxed state will continue forward, making a crack or a slap sound. Before we practice an exercise, remember that after you play a tone, your fingers should relax. Since, since conga drumming is very hard on your body, you need to train yourself to relax in between strokes as much as possible. So we relax on the heel stroke and after the open tones. It may seem like, you know, not, much time during a you know a five minute song or hour long performance, but it all adds up. Now let's put these strokes together in a common pattern called marcha or a conga tumbao. It goes like this, heel, toe, slap. Try that much first. After the slap, it's another toe before a heel, toe, and two open tones. So let's try that second part. Now put it all together. Heel, toe, slap, toe, heel, toe, open, open. Notice that my left wrist is resting on the edge of the drum while it's waiting to play another heel at the top of the pattern. This, again, is another opportunity to rest in between playing. And you'll see drummers who hold their hands in the air while playing open tones, and they're not wrong. It just uses up more energy, and, and a lot of the masters of the tumbadora, like Changuito, teach their students to rest their hand while it waits to play. This pattern is versatile for pop music because the slap and open tones establish a backbeat feel. So you can use it on non-Latin tunes and you'll hear it on a lot of popular songs produced over the last 60 years or so. 